copy of God's work, it is uh, really offered once again here in Stafford Town this afternoon, a copy of, uh, well, an extract at least from uh, the Bible, good place to begin, uh, Word of God, which is uh, made available to you freely without any cost or any obligation to you, you're simply for the taking. If you would like one, you feel free to come and ask for one. It is uh, God's work and it, uh, it has, uh, of course, the ability, the power, not only to instruct, but to make a body a person wise. The wisdom of God that leads to salvation. So you'd like to have a copy of God's Word, as I say, it's uh, freely offered to you. In our Protestant catechism, the question is asked, what is the work of creation? That is God making, God bringing into being that which was not. How did our universe and everything in it, how did it come to be? Well, some people see that accidentally, by some uh, peradventure, you know, that there was um, a kind of a bang, nobody knows uh, where the chemicals came from to make the bang, but there was this bang and it produced a great lump of matter. And from this great lump of matter, it's a fairy story I'm telling you, from this great big lump of matter, there came spontaneously life, motion, and being. Well now, if you can believe that, you have more faith than I do. If you can believe that or wish to believe that, then I would not be surprised were you to tell me that you also believed in Santa Claus. But of course such is nonsense because you cannot get nothing out of nothing unless that is you be God. But the Bible of course gives us the answer to this dilemma, to this question. We are told that uh, in the Word of God, that is in the Bible, that without faith, it is impossible to please him, God that is. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And of course, we understand by faith that the worlds that have come into being, been brought into being, were made, were created by God himself. So the answer, what is the work of creation? Well, it is a work, but who did the work? Not some magical explosion, but it was God who did the work. And the Bible tells us in six days, six literal days that is, six uh, 24 hour periods in which God worked and brought the universe and everything in it into being. Of course, you can cling to the fairy story. It's called evolution. Some people, they call it science. Some people, they call it a, a philosophy of men. Uh, some people, well, maybe they call it other things. But I want to assure you this afternoon, friends, that it has no basis in science whatsoever. It was at very best a philosophy of men, men ungodly men, men who hated God and any idea, any concept of God, and of course God's retribution for man's sin. Men who were ungodly, unrighteous, wicked, who dreamed up 
this fairy tale called evolution. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and everything in them. It was the work of God. God made it all. Bible plainly and authoritatively tells us in the beginning, God made everything. And God was God himself, the God that is of the Bible. You might notice that, um, you know, that the Bible, we started by offering you a copy of the Bible, a copy of the scriptures of God, you see, the Word of God, because that's our authority. That's the highest authority that there is in all your world, in all eternity. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Heaven and earth may pass away, but, but my word shall abide forever, Jesus tells us. The word of God, friend, that's the beginning point, you see, because you begin with God. Well, who is God? What is God? You begin with the being of God, you... All you have is just a wax nose. You can, you can, uh, you know, you can position it any way you like. You can make of it an Islamic religion, Roman Catholic religion, Buddhist religion. You can make it fit anything that you want. Now the place to begin is the Word of God. God has spoken, spoken clearly, and yet speaks today through His written word. The state, of course, that we come to know what God is like, who God is, this God who did the work, this six-day work of creating a universe and bringing humanity into being. This God, He has revealed to us in the Bible. It is the revelation, not just of Himself, of His own being, in triunity, that is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But um, it is also a revelation of mankind, of us, we ourselves, and what we are truly like. God, of course, is not as my friend, as just praying just a moment or two. He's not a grandfather with a large credit card. He is a holy and righteous God your sovereign creator, and because of that, he has a rightful claim upon you and the right, the authority uh, to demand of you how you should live, conduct yourself in his world. And of course, to rebel against such authority, to rebel against your maker, well, that's what the Bible reveals to us, is sin, transgression, of the law, the law that is of God. That's what sin is. So the Bible, the Word of God written, is the place where you begin. It's there you discover what this God is like, who He is, and what He has accomplished, what He has done. That is, in creating His work of creation, bringing the world the universe and humanity into being. It is, uh, as one part of the Bible tells us, it is God's handiwork. When did God bring this created order into being? Well, the Bible tells us that also. In the beginning, in the beginning, there was nothing, you see, and God and God, of course, alone can call into being that which is not. You see, God, in the beginning, when there was nothing, He spoke and He brought it all into being. But of course, if there's a beginning, was a beginning, and there was, for the Bible tells us so, if there was a beginning, that means there must be an end. It must come to an end. And of course, that brings me to a very, very important point. Where will you be 
when God brings it to an end. For the Bible also affirms, as you see, that God one day will bring down the curtain on this created order as we now know it. A day when God will come in judgment by his son Jesus Christ and judge the world in righteousness. All humanity, we shall all stand before the judgment throne of God. And so it's important that you know about the beginning, God's work of creation, and of course that you know about the end when God will judge you personally in righteousness. And of course that you be ready for that day, that you be found not in rebellion against your maker, not living in anarchy, not living in sin, transgression of the law of God, but reconciled to God. Man's sin, you see, man's rebellion against God one day, it will be judged in perfect righteousness by the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So it was God, you see, his work, he brought it all into being, even you yourself, it was God who did it, and he did it in the beginning. How did he do it? Well, God does not have hands. He's an invisible spirit being. So how did he do it? Well, the Bible tells us by the word of his power. It is that same powerful word that created the universe, everything in it. It is that same power, you see, that brings a man or woman to a knowledge of God as their personal savior. When Jesus said the man, a woman must be born again in order to see, perceive, understand, that is, be enlightened and, and come to know God personally, relationally, and of course uh, be, well as Jesus terms it, born again. It's a miracle from God. It takes the power of God, you see. Same power it takes to change human nature, don't you know? as it did to create the universe. It's the same work, it's the same word, it's the same power. The power of the gospel, you see, is that uh, was rendered in the New Testament as the power of God unto salvation. That same creative power working in the human soul and of course bringing men and women to be new creatures in Jesus Christ. Because here's the problem, you see. Created by God, upright in the beginning, mankind, wanting for nothing, righteous before God, in a right relationship with God. But then sin came and death came by sin and all the suffering you see in the world. Man sought out many inventions, inventing ways back to God, inventing religions, inventing false philosophies of men, false science and so on. All of this, the invention of men, you see, in rebellion against their maker. Because now, in sin, no longer in righteousness, no longer in a right relationship with God, but with a nature, a nature bent on sin, a nature biased towards sin, a nature Again, God, contrary to God, what the Bible means by being ungodly, unrighteous. And this is the way man, you see, is born now. Born of sinful parents and beget sinful parents, sinful children. And so therefore, you see a nature that has to be changed. And that takes more power than you've got, more power than the state has got, more power than religion has, more power, more power than all the men in the world put together have got. All the cleverness of man put together cannot accomplish the power of God, the creative power of God. That's why you see the Bible says when a man or woman is in Christ, they are a new creation. It's the creative power of God, you see, changing the nature, giving men and women a new nature, the very nature of God. This is a, a mystery, you see, just as 
creation was. You see, your problem with evolution is it's unprovable. Nobody can go back. Nobody can go back and test it. Nobody can go back and find out the matter. But you say, well, neither can you. But yes, I can because I have somebody. I know somebody. I'm in a relation with somebody who was there in the beginning. And by his work, brought everything into being created, the universe, the world, and mankind. So you see, my friends, in order to get out of your nature and sin, to get out of that natural bent towards sin, anarchy against God and against heaven, there has to be a work of recreation. There has to be the same word of power spoken. God must speak the word. Oh, I can tell you the story. I can expound the word of God to you. I can explain the message of the gospel to you. The message of the Savior sent by God into the world to rescue men and women from their sins. I can tell you about it. I can point you in the right direction. But I can't make you cross the line. I can't make you believe. Only God himself can do that. Only God got one, sir. What about you? Still in the dole? You still in the dole? No? What? <laughs> like I say, friends, uh, it's a work of God, a work of His power, and His power alone that can save you. The same power you see that in the beginning created the heavens and the earth and everything in. God must speak. God must, by his power, change your nature. What do you want, young man? What do you want, young man? Your, parents, your, your wicked parents tell you that? Wicked teachers? Go away and learn how to behave yourself. Your father needs to take a belt to your backside. Get some respect into you. So, friends, you see, it's the same power, the power that spoke the universe into being, that brought all things into being. It's the same power by which um, men and women are saved and brought to a right knowledge and right relationship with God, His word of power, the power to create and the power to save. And uh, I have to say the power to destroy. Because, you see, the power lies with God, not with man. Not you who determine your future. Not you who determine your eternal destiny. It's God. You shut up to God unless He speaks that word of salvation. Unless He makes you anew. Unless He causes you to believe. You'll live and you'll die in the same condition in which you were born in which you were conceived in your mother's womb in sin and go out of this world in your unbelief, in your damnable state, lost for time and for eternity. So, you see, friends, you shut up to God, shut in to God unless God shows mercy. But maybe perhaps today would be the day that you would call upon Him and seek His mercy Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near, as the Bible puts it. While you got the time, while you got the breath of life in you, while you got the health, the strength, while you got the mental ability so to do. Because maybe that day is too, not too far away when you'll have lost all those faculties. I mean, man's already lost his faculty of rationality. All around you, don't you see it in your world today? Irrationality, madness, foolishness. Is your nation not bound up with such foolishness? I mean, you, you tell us, you know, and you, you want us to believe, you know, that, that a young boy can become a woman, a young woman can become a boy. You see, sin has rotted the brains of men and women fallen, fallen creatures ruined, their minds ruined, irrationality about. But friends, while well, you still got some left, 
for you still got a modicum left, I urge you, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Seek God and seek his word of power that you might be saved. So what did God make the universe from? Well, the Bible tells us from nothing. Out of nothing, God called it into being. The whole cosmos, the whole universe, the world, mankind, out of nothing. You see, friends, uh, you can make things, but you can't create. You can, you can make things, you can take a piece of paper, and you can fold it, and you can make an airplane, and you can fly it, but you can't create it. Creation, you see, is, is making something out of nothing. Only God can do that. He created all things out of nothing. He spoke them into being. Not something man can do, not something you can do. Only, only I can do. And of course, you can't create in yourself. You can't create in yourself that which you have not got. You cannot create in yourself make yourself a new creature. Only God and Jesus Christ can do that. Again, I say, by the word of his power, from nothing, you see, you can't get nothing out of, you can't get something out of nothing. I mean, that's what you expect us to believe. That's what you want us to swallow when you talk about your evolutionary nonsense, that you can get something out of nothing. Only God can get something out of nothing. Only God can create. It takes an almighty creator to do that. Not a magical explosion. It's a figment of your fallen imagination. Not in the least. So you see, friends, they're from nothing. And why did God do it? Why did God create a universe? Why did he create a world? Why did he create a mankind, a human race? Well, the Bible tells us too, you see. All the answers are there in the Bible. They're to be found, you know. There are some things that are very mysterious. But you don't look into it. Delve into the Word of God. The answers are there. Why did He create? Friends, for Himself, the Bible says. For Himself, for His own glory, for His own pleasure. You know, well, you might think that's a bit egotistic and... If that was you or I, then it would be, but not God, because He's holy, He's almighty, He's the one who always was, no beginning, no end. He always was, always is, always will, will be. He's almighty God, He's a thrice holy God, holy, holy, holy. He's in charge, He's the governor, not you, not man. He did it for himself, for his own pleasure, for his own glory, for his own delight. He delights in his creation and he delights in the human race that he created. And that's why, because in their fallen, in their ruined, in their irrational state and condition, that's why God, he so loved his creation, you see, as creatures, that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world, you see through faith in him that you might be saved and reconciled to God that God might have glory uh, through you but you see it's salvation but here's the thing friends God will have glory from you God will have glory from you either in judgment or salvation if God is not glorified in your salvation he will be glorified in your damnation one or the other but God will be glorified in all his creation. But you see, he sent his son Jesus Christ into the world. You know, you've heard the words, I'm sure, umpteen times before. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, not everybody, not all God's creatures, not all humankind, but whosoever believeth on him, on Jesus, that is, shall be saved. He that believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. You see, friends, you have to be, you got to be, there's got to be that new birth. By grace, God has to intervene, and God has to change that nature, that heart of yours. 
and cause you to believe God, you see, is the cause of everything. And he will be, if you get saved, he'll be the cause of your salvation, not you yourself. God gets all the glory out of everything, you see, all done for him, all done for his glory, not for man's, not for yours. You get saved that God does save you. God does bring you to faith. It won't be you patting yourself in the head saying, what a good person I am. Eh? I became a Christian. No, friend. No, you're not here to do God any favors. You're not here to become a Christian. Only God himself can make you a Christian. Only God can impart that faith to you. Only God, you see, by the word of his power, the same power that created the universe, it takes to bring a man or woman to be a Christian, to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ for the glory of God. And what, what was the, the time, how long did it take God to create the world, the universe in which we live? Well, the Bible tells us in six days. Now you hear some people, and yes, some people who do profess to be Christians. But I think myself that they've kind of lost the plot a little bit. They tell me that, uh, well, God could have done it in billions of years, just as evolution says. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that God created the world, the universe, everything in six days, six literal days, 24-hour periods. That's all it took, not billions and billions of years. So how old is the world then? Well, approximately, we don't know exactly, but approximately 6,000 years. How long? How long has it got to go? That'd be a better question, wouldn't it? And how long are you to be for this world? That's another, that's another good question. Because when you fall out of this world, when you breathe your last, when you cock your toes up and go out of this world, and that day must come. Maybe perhaps this morning you put your socks on. Maybe you won't take them off tonight. Maybe the undertaker will take them off. Who knows? Young or old, healthy or fit. Friends, death is no respecter of age, no respecter of persons. It comes to us all eventually. You gotta die of something. You've got to be joking. But then, no sir. I'm dead serious, sir, and you need to get serious and repent and believe the gospel. Get your head straightened out. Like I say, friends, you know, it's a, it's a fact, you know, you're going to breathe your last one day. And of course, the Bible gives us information there too. It is appointed. It's appointed unto man once to die, after that the judgment. Then you come before your Creator. You come before your maker, you come before the one who gave you life, motion, and being. You see, that's another question. Answered, is it not? The question that philosophers have been looking into from time immemorial. From where comes life, motion, and being, they say. Well, the Bible answers the question. In God, you live and move and have your being. These things do not come spontaneously. These things do not come from matter. God is the true and living God. I mean the God of the Bible. I mean the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I mean the God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ. I mean Him. He is the life-giving God. He says, I am the resurrection and the life, the one who gives life, and yes, the one who takes it too. And one day, the one who will cause you to stop breathing. And then you will stand before him and give account in that day of your life and being, of your nature, your fallen nature even, and all your deeds that came from that fallen nature, your transgressions of his holy law, you'll give account. So you see, friends, what is the work of creation? Bible answers the questions, it's all there. 
It's all there in God's infallible, inspired, written word. It's there for you to seek out and search the answers. Sure responsibility under God to seek after God lest you might find him. Question that ought to be burning in the front of your mind when you gaze upon God's creation, the created order, the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, and all its beauty. Question that should be raging in your mind. Who is this person, this being who brought all this into being? And if you search his word, you'll find the answer. It's all there. It's all there. It's why God gave you the Bible. So that you don't go about, you know, fumbling about in the world, in the universe, always asking the questions, but never, never coming to an answer. The Bible tells us God's indictment of the entire human race is that all men are liars. So therefore you cannot trust the word of science. You cannot trust the word of philosophy. You cannot trust the word of religion. There's only one person's word that you can trust. The one who was there in the beginning and the one who in the beginning brought it all into being. Spoke. And God has spoken by his word. It's here in the Bible for you to read. Offered to you freely that you might take and that you might be instructed, that you might meditate upon these things and come to your senses, come to your right mind and be reconciled to God. Because you see, ultimately, the Bible is given for you, not simply to inform you, not simply to impart knowledge to you, but to bring you to a knowledge of God, a right relationship with God, nothing is more important, I tell you, in all your life, more important than your education, your financial situation, your marital situation, family situation. Nothing more important than this, that you are found in that day in a right and good relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And He, of course, Jesus Christ, is the one who speaks. He's the one who speaks in the Bible. The one who is the Savior, the only Savior of sinners. The only Savior of sinful mankind. The only one who can reconcile you to God. The one who came and lived in love, who became a man, born of a woman, born under the law, paid the penalty of the law, even death on the cross, suffered at the hands of wicked, cruel men and died that death on the cross, shed his precious blood in order that fallen creatures, men and women, made by God, made the image of God in the first instant, but fallen, sinful, ruined, might be reconciled to God. Oh, I exhort you, I implore you, I beseech you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God even today. While you may, while you may be reconciled to God, time is short, friend. Time is short. Who knows what a day will bring forth. Everything could change in the blink of an eye, a phone call, and everything, your whole world comes crashing down. But who knows, who knows how long you've got Today you have the truth declared to you. Today the truth as it is in Jesus is spoken to you, the word of God, the word of reconciliation, for that is what the Bible is also. It's a word from a reconciling God, a God who would be reconciled to you. God was in Christ, the Bible tells us, reconciling the world to himself. But are you in a conciliatory frame of mind? I think not. I think not only by the grace of God. Only he can bring you to that place. You see, the Bible also tells me that the carnal mind, you see, the soul that's not been born again, 
the carnal mind is at enmity against God. Not in a conciliatory mood, um, attitude at all. The very contrary. Hostile to God. In your mind, in your sin darkened mind. Hostile to God. Hateful of God. Hating God and hating one another. That's the outworking of your sin. That's the manifestation. That's the reality of your sin. That's the proof. That's the testimony of the sin within you that you hate God. God's in a conciliatory frame of mind, but you are not. You're the very opposite. You'd tear him from his throne if you could. You'd burn him. You'd crucify him again if you could. But of course you can't because he's God and you're just a fallen sinful human being at the mercy of God. But here he is. His word to you today. Be ye reconciled to God. And what's your attitude? What's your response? A finger raised against God in your ignorance, in your arrogance, in your impudence, in your wickedness. Oh, I plead with you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God today. Friends, you got the slightest inclination to even look into these things. I bet you do it. Study the Word of God. The answers are there. Study the Word of God. We're not asking you to commit intellectual suicide. It's perfectly reasonable. Come now, set the Lord, and let us reason together. You claim to be a reasonable human being. Is it never God made you? But of course, in your simple irrationality, you refuse to reason with God. But were you to come to the Word of God and use your God-given rationality, you would perhaps discover that what God says is perfectly reasonable. That He's God, that you're a human being, that you're sinful, that He has a controversy against you, and that you need to be reconciled to Him. And swiftly, very quickly. Well, you may, while well, you're in the way, before He takes you out of this world, before you die, before you breathe your last and go to a lost eternity because when that happens, there's no way back to God. There's no second chances. The tree lies where it falls. No place, no such a place as purgatory. It does not exist. That's the figment of the Roman Catholic mind. There is no purgatory. Heaven or hell, the sentence lies with God, the judge of all the earth, and he will judge you on the basis of what you have done or not done with the Son, Jesus Christ. By faith in his name, you might be saved. But by unbelief, you shall be condemned eternally, everlastingly. Yes, God made you, but you've departed from God apostatized from God, wandered from His path, your own pathway, friends, turned away. Every man, every woman and child born into this world turned away, turned away from God, from your Maker. And I bid you today, this afternoon, turn back to Him while you may. With open arms, He called thee long. I called a rebellious people, he said. He would be reconciled, but you would not. But you may, you may through Jesus Christ, through the Son of God, you came into the world for this, to save sinners, to rescue them from their fallenness, to bring them back to God, the just for the unjust. God made him, Jesus, to be sin. For him, he made him sin for those, for those that is, who are sinful. So like I say, friends, today, be reconciled to God. Turn from your sin. Repent. It's what the Bible calls it. Repentance. Change of mind. A change of heart. A change of direction. That's what's required of you. 
Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man is not. And let him return unto the Lord. He will have mercy, mercy with God, mercy, reconciling mind with God, but not with man. Would you be reconciled to God today? There is a way back to God from the dark path of sin. And Jesus is his name. The one who died on the cross and the one who cries out to you today. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. None other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The name Jesus. J-E-S-U-S, have you got it? Jesus is his name. The only Savior, crucified dead, risen from the dead and alive forevermore. The all-conquering Savior, able to bring you back to your maker. The one who brought all things into being for his own glory and for his own pleasure. Oh, I pray God be glorified in your salvation, not your damnation. Flee the wrath to come. Turn from the judgment of God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's God's promise. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, that is, shall be saved, shall be promised from sin's power, its penalty, and its presence, salvation from promise of salvation from the lips of your Maker, the one who made heaven and earth and everything therein, who made you and has a rightful claim upon your being, the right to judge and the right friends to demand of you how you should conduct yourself and demands of you that you should believe because you can be reconciled to God no other way, not by the works of your hands, religious or otherwise. Works of charitable deeds, friends, will not put you right with God, get you any favor with God. Only through faith in the Son of God who loved sinners and gave himself for them. So great, so vast, so immense is the love of God for lost sinners. Yes, ma'am. Ain't not just about to go. Just, I'm just, I'm just going any minute now. Just about to finish. I've only just come down. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. You too. So you like a copy of God's Word, friends. Look into these things for yourself. I urge you to do this. Like I say, you know, it's all there in the Bible, the answers that you need the, to the questions, the ones that matter. Word of God. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Word of God, friends. It's, it's, it's not, not the Word of man. It's the Word of God. It's the reconciling Word of God. It's the Word of God's love. It's the one of God's grace, it's the one of God's mercy, it's the, it's the one of God's compassion, it's the one of God's grace towards sinners and anarchy with heaven against God. While we are yet enemies, Christ died for the ungodly. That's the gospel, friends. That's the gospel you don't hear in your churches no more. That's the gospel you don't hear in your land no more. Christ died for the ungodly. There's hope, friends, is the way back to God. Through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's all here in God's book. You'd like a copy. You come and ask for one. Gladly place one into your hand. Jesus commanded the King himself, the Son of God, who was crucified, dead, buried, and raised again from the dead for sinners. His word to you this afternoon. Let it ring in your ears. Let it sink down into your heart and obey it. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel, Stafford. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And the only way you can enter that kingdom is in the way of repentance and faith towards the Son of God. 
you'd like a copy of God's Word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy upon your precious, precious, never-dying soul.